Welcome to Wesley Impact. This is the television program of Wesley Mission where each week we share a small part of the work we do, inviting you to see and experience our word and deed ministry firsthand. The past 12 months has certainly thrown some challenges our way, to say the least. There is no doubt that the pandemic interrupted many of our plans and perhaps changed the way we prioritise some of the more important things in life. Today I'd like to spend some time reflecting on my first year as superintendent at Wesley Mission. I started in the role in January this year and met some incredibly talented and dedicated staff, some amazing volunteers and clients, and have had the privilege of speaking with you each week. I'm sure next year will be as challenging and as exciting as this year, full of rich opportunities to do all the good we can, knowing that every life matters. I'm looking forward to seeing what is in store for us all, believing passionately, passionately, that God goes ahead of us. In today's program, I'll, I'd like to start by sharing the second part of our Aunties and Uncles documentary. We saw the first part yesterday, where residents from a Central Coast retirement village purchase and donate thousands of dollars worth of toys for our Aunties and Uncles program. Let's see today how Wesley Mission distributes the gifts to those who need it most. Might be nice for one of our mums. Thank you so much. Thanks for making the trip down to drop them off yeah. for us too. Okay. That was one of the residents from Brentwood Village. So sometimes the residents miss out on getting to drop the gifts off on the day. They want to make sure that they get them to us so they'll drop them off a little bit later. A lot of the residents put a lot of thought and effort into the presents that they buy. So not only is it a, an activity book where you know you can sit down for 10 minutes with mum or dad and, and um, actually learn some things, but it's also got you know the wellbeing aspect to it too, which is really important for everyone. I was expecting this to feel like something. What have you got there, Tracy? What don't I have, Liv? Look, this looks like some kind of a pet. I've got some construction toys, some outdoor toys, a cricket bat. Whoever gets these is going to have a lovely time playing in the backyard. Got some kids that in mind for these ones? Yeah, there's a family of three little boys. They range from 18 months to six years, so there's something here for all of them. Got this exceptional blanket which was sewn by the Knitters and Natters group of ladies. I don't think many of us have uh, received something so special and handmade like this in our life, so this is going to go to a special family. And not only that, the women who are in the Knitters and Natters group, they also do a market stall and throughout the year, the money that they have raised from selling their items at the market stall, they have also donated to us as part of our donation this year. Generosity is definitely growing each year. When it first started, there was still an incredible amount of gifts, but I feel like every year we show up, we're just getting bigger and better. It makes you very speechless to know that there are so many kind-hearted and generous people out there. I think a lot of us have heard the saying, takes a village to raise a family, and these residents are part of it. Aunties and uncles. Um, it's a little bit old. To be Santa's little helper is amazing. It just brings the Christmas spirit alive at this time of year. We've got some gift tags that we'll, when we wrap them, we can put the names of the child on so we know who they're going to. I saw it. They'll be age and gender appropriate. <laughs> Come along and lend a hand. Thank you for joining us. Oh, One of our mentors, we call her Auntie Liz, she has joined us today to help with wrapping of the presents. Obviously it's a really big job, so we need all hands on deck. So today we're wrapping presents for three little ones aged 18 months and four years and six. Okay. So we're trying to sort them into piles and poor Maddie's just having some trouble. <laughs> wow. I've made a okay, wrapping misjudgment of uh, I'm not quite sure how we're going to make this one work. Right. <laughs> My favourite part of wrapping gifts is getting it right and also just, you know, the excitement that the kids are going to have on Christmas Day because they never know what they're going to get, um, so it's always a surprise. Maybe you need to sort of stick it down before you... 
Liz has been matched to her niece for over three years. They're coming up to graduation and she's going to help us and also pick out some things that her niece might like while she's here. She was nine when I first met her and now she's nearly 14. Well, we do everything from just hanging out sometimes and playing games, but we've done a few sort of really great things. I took her to see Frozen the Musical in the city in Sydney and she stayed with me for a night while we did that. And we've been to the observatory in Sydney and looked through the telescope and the planetarium. And we've got the same sense of humour, she and I. We laugh at funny words and we have this sort of banter going between us that we have each time we meet, you know, and we sort of catch up and laugh at the same things. Wow, this was <laughs> Yeah, I like nice flat objects. They're easy to, to wrap in a tidy way. <laughs> and it's always tricky when you've got something that's a bit misshapen and you have to try and wrap the paper around it and make it nice and neat. <laughs> We have a three-year case management term in our program. When we reach the three-year mark, we like to do what is called a graduation. And that's where we deem the relationship is happening really naturally, really organically, and it doesn't need the case management support anymore. So we graduate and celebrate it, certificates, gifts, and then we step away from our case management and just let the relationship continue naturally as it would as an auntie and niece or auntie, uncle, nephew. So I'm an empty nester, so now I can get back into knowing what you know, young people do and what they think and, you know, well, I'm the lucky one. It's critical to have good mentors in our program. You might be the right person to become a volunteer auntie and uncle with us if, first of all, you love kids. That's got to be the number one thing. You have the time on a weekend to donate once a month to spend time and, and form that ongoing long-term relationship with them. You have to have fun. I think that's really important. And just uh, a kind, caring, non-judgmental, understanding kind of nature. Before I first did this because you know Wesley was sort of talking to me on the phone and I went along to their training course and that was really good I was really nervous though and I, I'm not a I don't get nervous very much but I was and I I was thinking what can I possibly do to improve the life of a little girl and and it wasn't until I met her the first time that I realized that there's a lot you know what well, I'm the lucky one the perfect wrap you have to roll the paper out and measure it and make sure that it's going to cover the entire gift because you don't want any gaps and you don't want to run out of paper halfway through wrapping a present and having to use a different type of paper. Trying to cut it straight so that your edges line up nicely and then making sure you have the sticky tape on standby and that you can actually find the end of the sticky tape. Matching them with an auntie and uncle, they don't have to do big expensive things. It really is about quality over quantity, but it's just creating those really beautiful memories that when they're adults, they'll look back and, and go, oh, I remember I had that Auntie Liz. Life throws stuff at everybody, doesn't it? But, um, but yeah, I'd like to sort of stay as her aunt. I need a, I need a something, a sticker to put on here, Alison. We put a lot of time and a lot of thought and effort into our matching process. We get out to meet the kids and their families, we'll ask them a range of questions, we'll get to know a little bit about them, their hobbies, their interests, their favourite foods, to kind of form this profile of you know, what they're after in an auntie and uncle. And likewise, when we are assessing our aunties and uncles, we ask them a quite an extensive list of questions as well to form a profile. And you might have a young boy who says, you know, I really want to learn how to fish. And then the next week you'll do a, an interview with one of our aunties and uncles and the uncle will say, oh, I'm a keen fisher, a fisherman. And it's kind of like, oh, in your mind, you're thinking, yes, this is going to be something that could really work for this young person that I have on my caseload. I'm already planning for next year's birthday because I know she really likes musicals. So I'm going to find a, you know, a good musical that we can go to and uh, have a special treat for her birthday. So that's what we're going to do. I think I might even make it a tradition. <laughs> Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> what sort of ball doesn't bounce? 
Didn't you just uh, you snowball? snowball? The snowball. <laughs> <laughs> what did Santa ask Rudolph about the weather? Is it raining? Close. Oh, oh, is it rain. going to rain, dear? Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> you are very close. Oh, <laughs> what do you get when you eat Christmas decorations? <laughs> yes, how did you know that? <laughs> We have had the best day. It's always so much fun when the team can get together. We work in so many different offices over different regions of New South Wales, so it's always very special when we get together and we just love being with each other. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're going there. <laughs> this, I know. This, this one's going to be very cool. So what we're doing now is we've finished choosing all the presents for our families. We've wrapped them all packaging them up now to take them to our cars and then we're going to spend the next few days playing Santa's little helper and delivering all the gifts to the kids in our program. Packing up the car, make sure that we have them all going to the right people. Oh, there's quite a few to deliver but they should be delivered in the next three or four days. special and really unique. The, the donor of the gifts is not known to us and it's not known to the family and the donor will never know who receives their gift. So just in a pure spirit of Christmas joy and generosity, they've chosen gifts that speak to them and they're happy to share those with a child in need. We're just delivering some gifts. This is a, a single mum with three young boys. We've got about 20 gifts in the car and we're going to distribute them to three children now. When I was a young mum it would have been such a relief to have someone come in and just deliver a bunch of gifts. We've spoken to the mum and we know the age and gender of the children and we know what their interests are so we've been really lucky to have such a wide variety of gifts to choose from. Like I can't believe that I can come to work, wrap gifts, uh, and drop gifts off to children and help make their Christmas brighter. I just feel so blessed. I've been with Wesley Mission for five years. So prior to this, I was working as a case manager for our out-of-home care program. And I've been with aunties and uncles for just over 12 months. The kids that are in out-of-home care have been removed from their birth families and placed with foster carers or kinship carers. In aunties and uncles we have a variety of children from both the out of home care program and voluntary out of home care. It's so much fun, it's just really exciting and I hope that oh I hope that the mum is going to really enjoy it and that the kids are gonna be really excited on Christmas Day. One of the truly special things about this is that we're bringing Christmas to life in a practical way. Special delivery. Hello. Hi, Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. That's good. Oh, wow. So we've had some beautiful donations of some toys that yep. we'd like to pass on to your family on behalf of Wesley Mission. Wow, thank you so much. You're welcome. I just have a few more in the car. Oh, wow. <laughs> we, might need to, uh, we might need to just pop these down out of the way for you. I can just picture the children on Christmas morning, just the excitement and the joy on their face when they see the presents under the tree and the paper flying everywhere and just their laughter and as they share what they've received. If you would like to learn more about Wesley Mission, visit wesleymission.org.au. You can find help in our community services, connect with our church and congregations, discover a volunteer role that suits you, stay up to date on the latest news and information, donate to support our work and help make a positive difference in your community. You can also connect with us on social media and subscribe to receive the latest news and information about Wesley Mission directly into your inbox. Visit wesleymission.org.au. 2021, what a year it's been. It's been a year where many of us have felt anxious, frustrated, inspired, challenged. Without a doubt, for many of us, most of us, if not all of us, it's felt like an incredibly long year. 
For my wife Sue and I, it's been an incredible season of transition. At the end of 2020, we moved to a new city. We established ourselves in a new home. We became part of a new church community. I started a new job. We started to be established new friends. In essence, we began a new life. My role here at Wesley Mission is to serve as the 13th person uh, who has been in the role of CEO and superintendent for this incredible organisation. The 13th person since 1884. What an overwhelming privilege and honour it is to serve in this extraordinary organisation. An organisation made up of 2,500 passionate staff, 4,000 incredible volunteers, scattered across 120 locations around New South Wales and across Australia, 60 diverse programs and ministries, 11 vital congregations, serving 150,000 people plus every single year, many of them most in need. All of this is undergirded by our vision and our mission, which speaks to the passion of who we are as Wesley Mission. Our vision is to, to do all the good we can because every life matters. Our mission, simply and profoundly, is to continue the work of Jesus Christ in word and deed. First and foremost, Wesley Mission is a church. We're grounded on the person and work and continue the ministry of Jesus Christ. We are a church and we are a community services organisation. When I was inducted into my role in February, which seems like a lifetime ago, I introduced a theme for this next season in our storied history. I believe that God is calling Wesley Mission to be a people of soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet and open hands. Let me reflect on each of those phrases. We are called to be people of soft hearts, hearts that demonstrate the compassion of Jesus Christ. And when I think of the year that's been, I, when I think of that sort of compassion, that soft-hearted compassion, I think of the incredible volunteers and the small staff, uh, number of staff in our Lifeline Sydney and Sutherland service. Over this last year, Lifeline has offered an incredible service to the people of our nation. We've experienced through Lifeline Sydney and Sutherland a 37% increase in calls year on year. Over this past year, our Lifeline volunteers have, have listened to more than 50,000 conversations with people in real need. In every opportunity, breathing hope into what often have seemed like hopeless situations. Soft hearts, hearts that are moved with the compassion of Jesus. Sharp minds, minds working for justice. I love how Martin Luther King puts it, the arc of the universe bends towards justice. That's our Christian conviction. And Wesley Mission's history is of an organisation that's not been afraid to speak out and speak out on matters of injustice. And this year, we've spent some time reflecting prayerfully on what are the issues that God is calling us to speak into out of our experience giving voice to those who would otherwise be voiceless. And we identified through this year three issues that in future years we'll be speaking loudly and passionately about, seeking to affect with others real change. We want to see a reduction, a real reduction in gambling harm. We want to see suicide prevention be enhanced and mental health services expanded. We want to see housing affordability, real housing affordability across our state and nation and homelessness reduced. These are seemingly intransigent issues, but we know that with passion, with commitment, with collaboration, real change can happen. Soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet. We are called to go wherever, to whomever, to do whatever in order to serve others with Christ-like servanthood. And this last year has really challenged us in this. This has been a year of disruptions, of lockdowns, of COVID restrictions and constraints. And I, I can remember hearing a story of our team in Western and Southwestern Sydney where half of our Wesley Mission people come from and much of our work occurs, who continued right through the depths of those lockdown restrictions to serve vulnerable children and families in need, 
often delivering in full PPE gear, gowned up, masked up, goggled up, going to homes and delivering meals to those who otherwise wouldn't have been able to put food on the table of their children as they struggle with COVID infections themselves. So soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet, and then finally open hands. It's incredible to step into an organisation with such a storied history dating back to 1884 and even before that, back to the early 1800s. We have this remarkable legacy, but we have an incredibly exciting future. And over the last year, we have developed and then approved a strategic plan for this next season in this storied history that is Wesley Mission. And the the two key goals, the two key strategic directions that we have prayerfully considered and confirmed is where God is leading us. That is to extend our impact and to grow a healthy organisation. We believe that God is wanting us not just to make a noise, but to make a difference and to grow healthily as we do that. Soft hearts, sharp minds, hard feet and open hands. This is who we are at Wesley Mission. And this is who God is calling us to be. 2021, I think it will go down in history as a memorable year. But through this year of many challenges, frustrations, disappointments, a historic year, we have experienced the God who has been with us. A scripture I keep on coming back to personally and I think has been the lived experience of us here at Wesley Mission is a, is a scripture that comes from the story of Joshua who's about to cross into the promised land of, of Israel. He's about to lead the people into the inheritance that God has prepared for them. And God says to Joshua, and he says this to us as we are about to step into a new year, be strong and courageous Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. At the end of Matthew's Gospel, as Jesus is commissioning his disciples to continue his work in word and deed, he says, go into all the world, making disciples, baptizing and teaching and serving and blessing. And then he offers this one final promise. As you go in my name, as you go doing my work in word and deed, I will be with you until the close of the age. And so as we finish this year, as we step into a new year, circumstances will change. Things will be different. There will be different opportunities and different challenges. Circumstances will change, but the God whose name we go in and whose purposes we serve, God does not change. God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. And so as we look forward to a new year, after looking back at the year that's been, what can we expect in 2022? Change, uncertainty, opportunity. All of these things are sure in 2022, as they have been in 2021. But what is certain? The writer of Hebrews reminds us that the Jesus who promises to be with us wherever we go in his name, Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The truth is, the future is profoundly uncertain. But the God whom we serve, the God who is with us, God is not uncertain. As I've said to you on a number of occasions, I know as I step into this new year, I can trust an unknown future to a known God. And so too can you, as you trust your life to him, as you step out in faith with him, as you learn to serve with him, not for him, but with him. My prayer for you, as we step out of this year into a new year, is that you too can trust an unknown future to a known God. God bless you. At Wesley Mission, we see kindness change kids' worlds. You can find out more at wesleymission.org.au. We are here for you. Thank you for being a part of Wesley Impact and for joining me throughout the year, when you've been able to. 
I've enjoyed this time together each week and I'm looking forward to spending more time with you in the years to come. I'll be taking a short break over January and February and we'll be back with brand new episodes of Wesley Impact in 2022. I hope you enjoyed the selection of episodes we prepared for you over the summer months. And as always, be in touch if Wesley Mission can be of help to you or a loved one in any way. Every blessing to you and to those that you love. Wesley Mission walks alongside people of all ages struggling with homelessness, addictions, mental health issues and financial stress. To find out more, visit wesleymission.org.au.